So the media has done it again. They've created a mild panic with this cases of malaria down in Florida and Texas. I think there was two cases in Texas, four in Florida. Those numbers might be a little off. But here's the scoop, okay? It happens in the U.S. Last time it happened was 20 years ago. There were eight cases in uh, Florida around 20 years ago. And the question is, why is that happening? You know, I do not and refuse to get political on this channel. However, on TikTok, there was this guy who had, he has 2.5 million followers. And he throws up something about the fact that Bill and Melinda Gates released GMO mosquitoes down in Florida, and that's why this is happening. So we are science-based. No Republican, no Democrat, we're science-based. So I'm here to tell you that the release of the GMO mosquitoes by the Bill Gates Foundation was done in Africa as well as Florida. And what that was founded, uh, were, like, what he did was, is that he did this GMO with the mosquitoes so the female mosquito would die quicker and trying to get it so it wouldn't transmit any illness. Um, hey, if I was a billionaire, I could think of a thousand different ways that I would love to spend my money, and that's one of them. I would love to spend my cash in a way that's actually going to help people in the environment. 100% not true. So the Gates Foundation was not involved in this malaria scandal. It's not, no, not true whatsoever. What is true is that the malaria cases that occurred down in Florida uh, happened when water temperature, it has the larva of the malaria mosquito, that water temperature in, uh, down in the marsh areas in Texas and so on and so forth has to be between an average range of 60 and 120 degrees Fahrenheit for a certain amount of days in order for those uh, malaria mosquitoes to thrive and hatch out. Now, what a lot of individuals may not know is that in 1910, 1912, malaria was pretty endemic in the United States, in the Carolinas, in Florida, it was everywhere. And it was eradicated in the United States with that wonderful pesticide, DDT. And that combined with the millions of man hours of destroying the habitat of the mosquito we were able to eradicate the malaria mosquito. However, it pops up every now and then, and you're going to see that more frequently with global warming. And you're going to see with climate change, you're going to... So 20 years ago, there was a spike of malaria. We have these cases right now. And then you're going to see those little hills get closer together with the increased water temperature. So there are five types of this uh, parasitic uh, plasmodium, and I'm going to list those five here. The one down in Florida was the Vivax, and the mosquito, the female mosquito, that species is the Anopheles mosquito. And what are you going to do with this, these terms? I have no clue, but hey, it sounds good and looks good, right? All right, here we got the names. Again, scientific names for any of those that are interested. What you need to know, if you're camping, you're going down to Florida, I mean, again, these are a small instance. However, there are still some isolated instances of Zika. Uh, last year, West Nile is still around. There were 220 cases of West Nile. That is down tremendously. Uh, so you still need to take your precautions, which we've talked about, and that is the repellents, the DEET, the picaridin, and uh, all of those repellents you need to be aware of. And I'm going to put at the end uh, the video where I go, all of the repellents, I address them and the historical significance of when they started and which ones are most effective. That'll be at the end of this video. So what are you looking for for signs and symptoms of malaria? Okay, so... I always kind of use this example. Imagine having a bad cold where you feel you have a fever and chills and stomach aches, and that day you went out and you chopped a load of wood. 
a whole truckload of wood. So now you combine the cold symptoms with the fatigue and muscle aches and back pain, and now you have malaria signs and symptoms. Now, what's really interesting, as I've spoke with you guys before about um, for every degree your temperature goes up, on average your pulse goes up about 10 beats per minute. There are about four or five illnesses where that does not happen. So you get this kind of paradox situation. You could have 102 fever and your pulse rate is completely normal. Malaria is one of those. Um, Legionella pneumonia, mycoplasma pneumonia, those are two types of pneumonia that causes that uh, pulses, it's not a paradox, but your pulse remains normal and you have this fever of 101, 102. Now I have had, in all of my years, I've had two cases of malaria and both of those were missionaries that were doing missionary work in Africa and came back and that, that's one of the red flags I had. The person came in with 102 fever, also the history, they came back from Africa and then I find out that their vital signs are like, what's going on there? 102 fever and your pulse is normal. They've had no Tylenol or ibuprofen to knock their pulse down. So that was really significant. And what they do in the lab is they do a smear of the red blood cells and they can see the abnormality. Now, something that's concerning is that the malaria mosquito can lay dormant, and this Vivax mosquito can actually lay dormant for a few months, up to four years. Usually it's about a seven to 10 day incubation period, but it goes to the liver and it just lays there until it says, okay, we're gonna make this person sick. And that's a real drag for medical professionals. So what are you gonna look for? You're gonna look for fever, body aches, backache, nausea, just feeling like you're completely wiped out. If you wait, you could get jaundice, yellowish eyes, um, and you're just going to feel totally wiped out. Now, in certain areas where malaria is more common, they actually make cleo-waved tests. What does that mean? You know, you go into an urgent care or ED and they do a strep test on you and they get it back in 10 minutes. They actually have those available for malaria in endemic areas. Now, like this map I'm going to show you right here, you're going to see where malaria is not that uncommon down in the Caribbean, down in uh, Cuba, uh, Mexico, and look where Brownsville, Texas is, right there on the border. Look at uh, Florida. It's right there next to the Keys in the Caribbean. So it's a matter of time when that water temperature gets up for X amount of days and that larva can live. But what happens is, is we get these cold waves, these extreme weather cycles, a cold wave comes through, kills the fruit down in Florida, but it also kills the larva of those mosquitoes. That's why this malaria is not making this massive comeback every year. You just don't see that. So what are you gonna do? For the average Joe out there, you're going to basically use your DEET, reapply it. Um, remember, check out our videos on repellents. Certain uh, percentages, you're going to reapply it more frequently. Uh, so that's really important. Uh, if you're in a mosquito endemic area, just use precaution with screens, tents, the whole nine yards that we've talked about. For my healthcare providers, F-U-O. Now I know what you're thinking. F-U-O, fever of unknown origin. You get a person come into your clinic or your emergency room and they have 101, 102 fever and they are totally wiped out. You gotta do a good history. You gotta find out where they've been. Have they been camping? Have they been to Florida? Have they been to Mexico on a trip? So you gotta do your due diligence with a very, very uh, good history of what's been going on, how long have they been sick. You can't identify it, no strep, no mono, no pneumonia. You gotta start thinking of some really esoteric things and you gotta start looking for those zebras. So that's for my healthcare providers out there. Treatment, it is destination specific. Uh, chloroquine has been used uh, very well, doxycycline. So I was gonna go to Africa with my daughter on a trip a few years ago and one of the things you got, we're going to do in that area of Africa is we're going to take two or three days prior to leaving, 
we're going to do the doxycycline, we're going to take it while, they're there, while we are there, and then we come, and come back, we're going to take the doxycycline again for a few more days. Prophylactically, that works great. The problem with the treatment for malaria is pregnant women, it can be a real pain in the butt. Um, you don't want to be on these antibiotics for really long periods of time and may have not come up with the vaccine yet. So important stuff to know with malaria. All right, have you ever been involved with any type of mosquito-borne illness or someone you know? Write it down in the comments below. I would love to hear about it. I made a mistake in the last video, which was on epic water filters. So you might want to check that out. And the mistake I made was in our merch, we're doing these stainless steel water bottles. And inside we have the epic filter. So I said this was single wall and it's not. It is a double wall. And how I knew that was it was staying cold all day long in 90 degree temps. I'm like, wow, that's really awesome. I gotta go double check this. And sure enough, it's a double wall. Um, great water bottle. All right, guys, keep your eyes on the rise and your face to the wind. Till next time.